Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights and Entertainment. This is episode 109, celebrating a return to normal. Kind of. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my energetic and understanding co-host, Michelle Whalen. Not feeling very energetic, but thanks. I was running out of adjectives. <laughs> need to get you a thesaurus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to look look some stuff up here. <laughs> That's okay. Anyway, how are you anyway, doing today? I'm doing okay. This seems like the longest week ever that just won't end. Yeah, it just keeps getting longer and longer. <laughs> yeah, they sure do. So, in today's episode on Disney Detective, we're going to talk about Disney World reducing some of their social distancing requirements uh, in select areas of the theme parks. And we'll talk about some stage shows that are back at Walt Disney World. Mm -hmm. So, a little bit of a return to normal there. Yeah, just a little. And our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy, Star Wars Celebration 2022 is coming sooner than we expected, but we won't be there. And Disney's Gina Carano is uh, up for Emmy nominations for Mandalorian, so she's kind mm, of... No. No. That's not it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess <laughs> we'll... When we get to the story, I'll tell you. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to it. Right. In our entertainment news, James Gunn says Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is the end of the story. Dun, dun, dun. It's interesting. I saw an interview uh, with... Uh, Dave Bautista, right. who plays Drax, and he's pushing for a Drax solo movie, oh, but with someone else as Drax. Oh, okay. So he thinks that there's some story that can, that okay. can be milked out of that one. So. Okay. Also, NBC is canceling the Golden Globes for 2022. Mm -hmm. They've got a bit of a reputation you need to work on there. Yep. Uh, and then we'll finish up with our insightful picks of the week. We didn't mm -hmm. have any afterthoughts this week, it looks like. No. Unless you slipped a minute at the end no, there and didn't, I didn't tell me. No, okay, no, good. Nothing there. Before we get started, though, I would uh, invite folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can get video versions of the podcast, of all of our show's podcasts, uh, if you look up Insights into Things, or you can get just audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Entertainment. We're available on Google, Apple, Pandora, Amazon, Stitcher, any place you can get a podcast these days. We would also invite folks to uh, write in, give us your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can get us on Twitter at insights underscore things. We're at Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. On Instagram, we're at insights into things. Or you can get all those links on our website and give us feedback through there at www.insightsintothings.com. Shall we get started? Sure, let's do it. All right. Go for Disney Detective. So uh, this news story actually came out on Wednesday. Um, obviously, today we know there were a lot of CDC uh stories that came out uh, about different things uh, as opposed to masks and social distancing. But Walt Disney, they actually came out with their updated um, uh, announcement on, uh, on Wednesday. Uh, so this article actually came from clickorlando.com, but a bunch of different news sources uh, were, were talking about it, um, saying that Walt Disney World has announced plans to relax physical distancing measures in select areas of its park. So since the Orlando area park 
uh, parks had reopened last year, guests have been required to maintain six feet of distance between one another to prevent the spread of COVID. Um, also, there were other measures when parking your car, they were parking every other spot and every other row to kind of keep the cars uh separated while people were getting in and out and then they were going back and and filling up the spots after the the row and all of the guests had already been in um so now it seems that on wednesday the company website had indicated that um measures would kind of be relaxed in certain spots so they said Temporary adjustments are still in place to promote physical distancing. While we will reduce physical distance distancing measures for guests across many areas with a gradual phased approach, six feet di- uh, six feet distancing measures will continue in all of our dining locations, merchandise stores, and in areas where guests can temporarily remove their masks. One of the things that was interesting was one of the websites did a screenshot of how you know the the policy had changed and it was very minute changes uh where the one showed two people with a little line saying six feet now it just showed two people but it didn't actually have like a measurement so in most cases they're saying people can get a little bit closer um but again in certain areas they'll they're still keeping the six feet apart um Excuse me. So again, so they still have, you know, signage and and ground markings, um, you know, to keep guests, uh, you know, apart while they're waiting in line uh, in certain queue areas. They do still have uh, physical barriers uh, to separate people um, when they're on transportation vehicles or on certain rides or breaking up the queue. Uh, They do have uh, a notice about um, party size that if you're traveling in 10 or more, you will be asked to split up into smaller groups for certain things. They are asking if you're paying for parking to use a cashless pay system. Uh, They were talking about how cast members are going to be trained to engage with guests and promote physical distancing guidelines in common areas and queues. Um, And again, they've already... Um, you know, been doing a lot of this. One of the things that they stopped doing, which we briefly mentioned last week, is as of May 8th, cast members were no longer getting their temperature checks when they were reporting to work. And as of the 16th of May, guests are going to stop being screened before entering any of the parks. Um, Face coverings, as of this point, are still required. Uh, You're only allowed to take them off when you're actively eating or drinking, or if you're taking an outside photo, as long as you're, that you remain still. So if you're on the move, you're still, at this point, supposed to be wearing a mask. Um, And it seems Universal had already made some of these similar changes as well, where they've now reduced uh, six feet distance to the three feet distance. So I, I think the problem you're going to run into at this point is as we gradually roll these mm-hmm. these um, guidelines back, people are going to get very confused by this. Right. You know, what are the rules this week? How far can I be this mm-hmm. week? Where can I take my mask off? Right. It, it's almost, I think it would almost have been better if they had kept full guidelines until they could just remove them all. Right, right. As um, opposed to going you know, backwards of, okay, now you can do this. You yeah. Know. Like how do you we just got that? used to right. doing everything one way. Why not just kind of. Right. And how it? do you convey this in a way that's understandable to people? Mm-hmm. Especially when you're like, you know, they took one step last week with temperature checks. Now they're taking a set, a set of different checks here. They're not doing away with stuff. They're just changing right. the way. And and that's the thing is, like I said, when you look at the two screenshots that that various uh, websites have posted of what it was and what it is, it's really kind of hard to see where, sure, yeah. where the difference lies. Because if you're still splitting up your group of 10 or more, you still can't all sit together at a restaurant and you're still separating everybody six feet in a restaurant... What difference does it make if you're on a right. ride? Right. Like, and that's how the problem, is, that? is that you're mixing right. your uh, standards here? Mm-hmm. You know, if it's three feet, if three feet's okay in one instance, why isn't it okay in all right. instances? Right. 
Um, it's just, I don't, I don't think this is going to work out too well. And hopefully we'll be able to pull the plug on all this stuff very right. soon. Right. Um, but good thing we're not going to Disney anytime soon. <laughs> exactly. So as, you know, kind of a, another sign that things are changing and getting better, we we're getting some shows back, right? Right. Let's so, talk about that. so this was uh, a, a nice uh, surprise because obviously, when everything shut down and and things started to open back up, a lot of the live entertainment was. They were one of the first ones that were hurt by it all that couldn't come back. Um, because they had no idea how to do any of the the live stage shows. Uh, So it seems that they're trying this out to see how how it goes. So it's actually a celebration of the Festival of the Lion King. So it's actually a modified version of the Festival of the Lion King show that is performed at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Um, And so what they're doing to accommodate the COVID-19 restrictions is the theater's capacity has been greatly reduced to accommodate one third of its actual capacity. So you have to leave empty rows um, between different groups. Uh, Parties are seated in groups of four. So if you have a group of four or or more than four, you're going to be split up so that this way they're making sure everybody has, um, you know, some distance. Uh, There's no virtual queue or fast pass in the operation. So there's just a standby line and they basically have it where it snakes throughout Africa, uh, a bridge over to Pandora, and then kind of back to to Africa. So you're kind of spread. And that's one of the things you've seen numerous times is the queue lines look really huge for a lot of these things when really it's not. It's just because they have to space everybody out and it's, you know, where do we go now? Um, So the show itself uh, being a little bit modified, it's only about five minutes shorter uh, because of it. Um, They did uh, one of the air, uh, one of the acts used to be tumble monkeys and another were uh, was a flying bird segment. So those have been cut as of right now, but they're hoping that as things get a little bit better, they're able to bring those aspects of the show back as well. Also, another aspect of the show is uh, guest participation. That's been uh, eliminated as well. So they used to, at the end of the show, kind of get the kids all to come and do a little parade um, around the the theater. That obviously isn't going on. Um, So right now the show is doing unannounced previews, but it's officially going to debut on May 15th. So, you know, here's at least the first show that's coming back. So hopefully, you know, more will be coming back. And the other thing, too, is they've modified the show so that this way they can spread out uh, the guests as well as the cast members, the actors that are in the show as well, so that this way they're not right on top of each other either. So so now what rules apply here uh, under the circumstances of it being the show? Are you six feet apart? Are you three feet apart? Well, they have everybody, you know, you can see from from the video here, this was a video of the show. Everybody's kind of, you know, spread out in some cases more than six feet, um, you know, in, in most cases. So they're leaving, you know, rows in front, rows behind you, and then leaving so much room in between the row. And even if, you know, I'm guessing maybe the people that are a little close to each other are probably people that are within the same party. Right. So they probably, you know, group them, um, you know, together. So, uh, you know, it's a step in the right direction, yeah. right? And again, you have to wear your mask, even though you're at the theater and, and you're not moving, you still have to wear the mask. So, right. so if you had a choice of what show you'd want to bring back next, what would it be? Phantasmic. See, and I don't know why they don't do that now. Cause you can spread up pretty well in Phantasmic if you don't pack everybody in like they usually well, do. Well, and that's the thing is, and unfortunately they, they always, you know, pack everybody. And well, technically this is kind of, it's not really indoor. It's just kind of covered. Mm. Um, you know, the Beauty and the Beast show would be nice too. And and that's the thing is a lot of them, they have very large theaters. Right, and right. really besides Fantasmic, most of the shows, depending on what time of year you're going, don't get fully packed. 
so you could space people out uh you know True. a little bit more mm. um phantasmics one because they usually only do it once or twice a night that's where you get standing room only well, so you, you just, get you limit your capacity well yeah and, and that's what you have to do you yeah know, if it's for public safety right mm -hmm. absolutely so all right so that's all we have for our disney detective mm -hmm. we'll be right back with our tales from the edge of the other side of the room i'm galaxy <laughs> For seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. that intro shorter it's too long okay anyway go for tales from the edge <laughs> of the galaxy so this was something uh that you actually had sent over to me um it was news that star wars celebration anaheim 2022 was actually changing their dates uh so they had released today that the dates of star wars celebration are actually moving up originally they were going to be august 18th through the 21st and now they're going to be May 26th through the 29th. Uh, so in their press release, they said, we can't wait to welcome fans back safely. Current ticket holders that wish to keep their existing tickets will have their orders automatically transferred to the new dates and will receive a new confirmation email. And if fans uh, want to keep their ticket, no further action is needed. If you already had your ticket and wanted a refund, you need to do it before June 11th of this year. Um, so no word on when you can start buying tickets for it. I'm, you know, obviously everybody that had tickets already uh, are kind of already in the queue, I guess. So we were actually thinking about going to it and now we're not sure. So we'll kind of wait and well, I see. I think we're, we're pretty sure we're not going. That we're not point. going now? I don't, I don't think I'm going to be comfortable flying at this point by then. By next still, year. So. Okay. Yeah, well, and we're not driving. So. <laughs> right, because that's a really long like drive for 3, us. 3,500 miles. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think But we'll hopefully, pass. you know, there'll be. We'll wait for Celebration to come back to Orlando. To Orlando and, 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 we'll and do, do that. that. But hey, if it was a D23 convention, you'd be flying out. Yeah, so yeah, that I, we're still I not sure about. Do. Well, yeah, see ya. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> one day I'll make it to one. So, um, so yeah, so some good news for people looking forward to to Star Wars celebration. Did they say why they moved it up? No, there was it, nothing. Was it a scheduling conflict or something? Because usually, you know, if anything, you move it back. Yeah, you especially never move under it. the current conditions, it just seemed odd. Yeah. maybe it was. I don't know. Convention yeah. center wasn't available. Who knows. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, tell us about our favorite uh, Mandalorian <laughs> actress. Yeah. So it seems that despite Lucas, um, you know, Lucasfilm stating that they would no longer work with her, it had uh, it. They included her in their Emmy for your consideration awards push for the Mandalorian. So on Sunday, a poster surfaced from Disney, which owns the Star Wars production company, promoting cast members, including Pedro Pascal and Giancarlo Esposito for awards contention. Uh, Carano is listed under the best supporting actress category. Obviously in February, we had the whole backfiring of everything where she had posted a now deleted uh post on instagram that ended up you know getting her fired um but again it was kind of funny that with all of this 
she's listed as, you know, one of the people in contention, you know, for, hey, for your consideration, nominate the. <laughs> <laughs> Funny people. how she's the only supporting actress nominated. Right. Well, because the other thing, too, is in most cases, everybody else was a guest actor that was only yeah, in. But she didn't appear in that many episodes, though. Right. But everybody else pretty much only appeared in like one or two. She uh, I, I guess there has to be there's probably something where how much screen time. You have, yes, but I would have thought Ming Na Wei would have been in there as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of surprised that she. Well, she is. As she's guest actor. She's as a guest actor. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know what, you know, what the, um, uh, you know, guidelines are for, you know, what makes you just a supporting actor or what makes you a guest, right? You know, star because. Really, you know, Mark Hamill was listed. <laughs> he well, technically he didn't wasn't... even actually appear on screen, so I don't know how. Right, he got nominated. so it's kind of yeah. Like, do you just kind of hey, Mark Hamill's likeness? Well, and it's almost like it's a list of this is everybody that was in this season. Right, nominate right. somebody, <laughs> please. Like that, it, yeah. it's kind of yeah. You know, so we'll say you know uh, the Emmy Awards are scheduled to take place September of this year. So we'll see uh, who actually gets gets the nominations. So on a side note, related but not related. Okay. Uh, they had decided, um, National Geographic decided to air the episode of oh, Running Wild right. with Bear Grylls. Which we knew. With Gina Carano in it. Mm-hmm. And I have to say, after watching it, I have a very different opinion of, of her now. Okay. Um, she does not, like... So the controversy that that kind of got her in bad standing with Disney was about her social media posts. Mm-hmm. And she had some, let's call them obtuse statements or insensitive statements, mm-hmm. um, which gives you a certain impression of of the attitude she, she might have towards other people. Mm-hmm. And... She came across very different on the show itself. And the, the one the one thing that that's I like about the show is as much as a lot of the adventure stuff they do is staged, one of the things that they do is they interview the person who's participating with Bear Grylls. Okay. And you're being interviewed under duress. So you're you're there confronting things that are terrifying to you you're being put in a very uncomfortable position sometimes literally very uncomfortable you're being forced to face your fears and you the real you comes out under those stressful circumstances and she came across as a very sensitive very vulnerable individual and you can tell that it was real because they're, you know, she's conveying stories, uh, like w- one story she conveys in the episode is um, about her sister. Bear asks about her sister, and her sister had an addiction problem. And they didn't go into real details about it, but she was in pretty bad shape. And they thought that, you know, she she was probably going to wind up killing herself as a, as a part of that. And they talked about how, almost like an intervention, they... She helped her sister out, and then her sister had her first child, and it saved her life. And to see that that sensitivity come out and that vulnerability come out under very honest circumstances um, re- gave me a very different impression of her, um, where I think the controversy that came out of her social media stuff probably wasn't an accurate reflection of who she is. Mm. It it may have been external influence. It may have been any number of things, but seeing her on the show, you know, running wild really gave me a a different appreciation for the type of person that she is. Um, And I, and I, I, I came across where I have a lot more respect for her now. Um, anybody that goes through the stuff that on that show that they do, I have a lot of respect for. Right. Um, but she, 
I don't look at her in the same negative way as I did prior to that show. So I think from an image standpoint, it was an excellent idea to get that out there and to let people see a little bit about who she really is mm -hmm. and to, to get a glimpse of that, that inside personality that she has. So, cause she talks in the show about being cast in these strong leading roles all the time. And she's this strong, tough person. And in reality, she's not, you know, she, personally, she has all these insecurities and, and, you know, self image problems and, and all this other stuff. And it really humanized her. Hmm. Um, so if you haven't watched the show yet, I think it's worth, even if you're not into watching the adventure shows and stuff like that, it's worth watching to kind of get a glimpse of what the real Gina Carano is to watch that show. Well, and maybe that was kind of, since they allowed it to air, maybe that was almost some of their PR cleaning up. Absolutely. You know. I would, to... I would not put that past Disney. You know, to say, well, because maybe some of those other rumors that, you know, we talked about in previous weeks about, oh, she might still be coming back. Maybe they're trying to save face and whatever. Maybe that. Well, and Disney's the type of organization that's very calculating. You mm -hmm. know, they're going to put something like that show out. Right. Then they're going to see what the fan reaction is. Mm -hmm. And if the fan reaction by airing out our dirty laundry is positive, then we'll see what the next step is to to bring her back into yeah, the fold. And maybe that mm. it's a great character that she portrays. She does a fantastic mm -hmm. job doing it. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see the character in the show more. I just wish she would play by the rules of, of Disney in order to do that. Yeah. So that was all we had for our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. We'll be back in a minute with our entertainment news of the week. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. Dude, stealing my thunder. Go for entertainment news. <laughs> so James Gunn says that Guardians of the Galaxy 3 might be the end of the story. So James Gunn loves to interact with fans on social media. And when somebody asked him about potentially working on a fourth Guardians of the Galaxy movie, he was incredibly candid about the franchise's future. He said that, you know, although he's open to anything... Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 was kind of the bookend to the story that started the first movie. He said, me, never say never, but I see Volume 3 as the end of the Guardian story that I started telling back in Volume 1. Um, as you had mentioned about Dave Batista, Gunn's post also came um, as... Dave Batista has suggested that his contract was going to be up at the end of filming of Galaxy 3 and that he insisted, again, that Drax could still live on, but in it with another actor. But then Gunn kind of wrote back and said that he really only sees Batista in that role. Uh, so will Guardians 3 be the final movie? Um, we, you know, I guess we'll, we'll have to kind of wait and see uh, what happens. Obviously, the movie was very successful it was a welcome sign for marvel because it gave you know people a chance to see lesser known heroes and 
you know, and a different type of Marvel movie than we've been, you know, seeing over the past years. And, you know, then they even got, you know, Disney transformed the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror in Disneyland into the Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout ride. And there's also another Guardians of the Galaxy ride that's coming to Epcot, um, I guessing probably next year because of all the the de- delays and whatnot. Um, but then again, as you were mentioning, Batista had said that you know he's been with the franchise from the start. By the time Volume Three is going to be released, he's actually going to be fifty four years old, and he said that he's ready to kind of hand it over to somebody else. So maybe that's where the whole tie in was. Hey, you could still do a story with Drax, just have you know, somebody else do it. So I guess we have to kind of wait and see. I believe Guardians doesn't come out until next year, I think is what the uh, the Marvel uh, trailer had yeah, it for. Right. So we'll have to, you know, wait and see. So maybe it is. Maybe they just do Guardians as a, a trilogy or if they, you know, do another version, maybe it's a different group of, of characters. Yeah, and I and I have to confess, I was not a big Guardians fan of the comics, mm-hmm. so I don't know what direction they ever went in the comics itself. It was always kind of a fringe comic, mm-hmm. you know. It wasn't one of the mainstream, so it's it kind of shocked me and it shocked a lot of other people that that Disney turned it into such a big franchise. Because mm-hmm. um, I'll be honest, when we when we saw the first Guardians of the Galaxy, and everyone said, "Oh yeah, they're going to be folding this into." the Avengers Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I'm thinking, how are you going to do that? Like, right. it, it, like, did not even make sense to right, do that. Right, right. But they did. Um, but and they it, did, and they did a good and job. And it worked, it. yeah. You know. Um, I don't know where you're going in the third movie, though. I mean, right. after fighting a Celestial, right. what do you fight now? You fought right. a Celestial, you fought a Titan. What's next? God? Is it Guardians of the Galaxy versus God now? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Okay, so Golden Globe news. Yeah, so this came out uh, earlier. uh, It was actually on Monday. So it seems there's been some growing Hollywood pushback against, uh, you know, the scandal plagued Hollywood Foreign Press Association. And the avalanche of it all on Monday came as NBC announced that it would not broadcast the Golden Globes award ceremony in 2022. So the network's decision comes after there was an array of top flight film and TV companies, including Netflix, Amazon, Warner Media, who have all been distancing themselves from the Hollywood Foreign Press and the Globes in recent days. So the Hollywood Foreign Press has not said whether it'll try to hold the Globes you know, ceremony next year. So they haven't even mentioned anything yet. So it seems the 87 member group is made up of critics of overseas media outlets and has been engulfed in uh, by issues ranging from preferential treatment sought by its members to lack of racial uh, representation in its ranks, which includes no black members, according to the Los Angeles Times investigation last year. So some of the problems, you know, have kind of been an open secret for year for years among Hollywood insiders, but everybody's kind of just looked past it and just kind of gone on with it. Another blow to not only all of this is that um, as of Monday, Tom Cruise has now returned three of his Golden Globes uh, that he got for Born for the for- Born on the Fourth of July and Jerry Maguire, according to Variety, um, and that follows criticism of a group of other opulent A-listers, including Scarlett Johansson and Mark Ruffalo. So, you know, it's not only hey, we're not even showing your show. There are people that are like, I don't even want your award anymore. That's that's pretty bad yeah. when you know people are, are giving back their awards. Um, so they say we continue to believe that the Hollywood Foreign Press is committed to meaningful reform. However, change of this magnitude takes time and work, and we feel strongly that the Hollywood Foreign Press needs time to do this. As such, NBC will not air the 2022 Golden Globes, assuming the organization. Ex- executes on its plan, we are hopeful to return to air the show January of 2023. And that was a statement from NBC. Um, 
So it's kind of interesting to to have everybody go against them, you know, for the first time in, you know, I don't even know how many years it, it's been. Um, so well, see, and my response to that is, well, it's about time. Right. Because they've got a pattern of this mm-hmm. abuse and, and yeah. neglect for for years. Right. Why all of a sudden are these actors waking up and doing something about yeah. it? Tom, when did Tom Cruise get his well, first Golden Globe? And that's the thing. You know, it wasn't even like, like they were recent ones. They were all right. from the 90s. Born on the 4th of July and Jerry Maguire. Like, yeah, so geez. he's held on to them this long and all of a sudden <laughs> right. he's now decided he's, to do something now, about it. Now, you know what? I'm, I don't need him. Maybe they were taking him to space. Maybe he was purging. Maybe, I mean. <laughs> See, I, I think <laughs> he, he, hasn't had a, he hasn't had another Mission Impossible movie in the last six months. So he <laughs> right. needed to he get. He needed something. He needed to get some he needed, attention. Right, right. So. Yeah. I, I don't know. It, 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 don't participate. You know, right. this is everyone complains about cancel culture. And well, it's not cancel culture, it's consequence culture. Right, right. You know, but the problem is, is that people have looked, turned a blind eye all these years now. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, now we're going to do something about it. No. It's a, it's a bit hypocritical, I think. Well, at least they're waking up now. Well, yeah, I guess it's about time. Mm-hmm. Better better late than never, right? Yep. So, all right. That was all we had for our entertainment news this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll be right back with our insightful picks of the week. Yep. Go for your insightful pick. So my insightful pick this week is Marvel's Agent Carter. Um, now you might be saying, wait, didn't that already air well yeah it did it just so happens that now with marvel and disney you have a lot of things showing up on disney plus that you haven't seen in a while um so uh marvel's agent carter happens to be on disney plus um so the first season takes place in 1946 with peggy carter having to balance the routine of office work that she does for the SSR in New York City with secretly assisting Howard Stark, who finds himself framed for supplying deadly weapons to the enemies of the United States. Carter is assisted by Jarvis, um, by Stark's butler, Edwin Jarvis, who, uh, to who find those responsible and to dispose of the weapons in the second season, Carter moves from New York city to Los Angeles to deal with the threats of a new age, a new atomic age by the secret empire in the aftermath of world war II, gaining new friends, a new home and a potential new love interest who isn't, um, Captain America, just FYI. Um, so the first season consists of eight episodes, which originally aired um, January to uh, February in 2015. And the second season consisted of 10 episodes, which ran uh, January, uh, March, January to March in 2016. Both seasons actually aired during mid-season breaks for uh, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And even though it did really well. NBC canceled them after two seasons, which we were kind of upset about because we really enjoyed the show and it was a nice little tie in, um, you know, to Captain America and, you know, the other characters. And then what ended up happening was later on, uh, if you watch agents of shield, one of the characters, the other characters from, um, Agent Carter, he ends up becoming a character in in Shield. So, and it's one of those things we started watching it, or I started watching rewatching it again with our daughter because we did Falcon Winter Soldier, and she's up on all of the Marvel things. So now here's you know to give you a little backstory in Peggy's life, and you know why mommy you know likes her little. Agent Carter pops so much. Okay, cool pick. Thank you. So my pick this week is not a documentary. Oh my God, really? It's not a crusty old show or or movie that I dug up. This is actually fresh, brand new, hot off the presses. This week's uh, insightful pick from me is The Bad Batch. 
Now, they call themselves the Bad Batch, but the motley crew that makes up Clone Force 99 boasts an astounding 100% success rate and skills unseen in any other clone troopers. Adept at working together, even after the end of the Clone War, Hunter, Wrecker, Tech, and Echo continue to operate as a unit using their unique talents and specialized physiology to survive at the dawn of the Empire. Star Wars The Bad Batch follows the elite and experimental clone troopers of The Bad Batch first introduced in The Clone Wars as they find their way in a rapidly changing galaxy in the immediate aftermath of The Clone War. Members of The Bad Batch, a unique squad of clones who vary genetically from their brothers in the clone army, each possess a singular exceptional skill that makes them extraordinarily effective soldiers and a formidable crew. Uh, cl 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 crew. So they kind of telegraphed this in the last season of Clone Wars when Disney had brought the Clone Wars back to finish the last season. Okay. There was a couple of episode arc that had the Bad Batch in there and it kind of left everybody scratching their heads as to who are these guys? What are they doing with them? Why are they showing up here? It has nothing to do with the overarching story of the season. What's going on? And it turns out it was just a preview of their own show. Because, like, with Disney, everybody gets their own show now. Of course. Um, I was not excited about this. Um, I was not particularly enamored by them when they showed up in the Clone Wars. I, Being the Disney, the Star Wars purist that I am, um, I, I, I didn't like the idea that you had these clones that were unique. Because then they're not clones if they're unique. Um. And the storyline behind him was a little extraordinary. And I don't know. I just didn't, I didn't like it. So I was hesitant to watch the show itself, but I finally broke down and I watched it and it, it works surprisingly. Well, it works. The first episode starts off right when next uh, order 66 is, is executed. And what was very interesting was the very first episode brings another character in from rebels who you don't get to see them in this light as an actual Jedi okay. in, in rebels. So it's a little bit more backstory there. You get to see other characters. Tarkin shows up in this and he's going to be a protagonist here. Um, the dynamic between the team is very interesting the way they do it. And they introduce another um, character who's another oddball, you know, from the, from the clones that uh, I'm still a little kind of the jury's still out on whether or not I'm going to like this character or not. Um, but the first episode, you know, I got that under my belt now. It was was very well done. And again, it's one that's the show's run by Dave Filoni. So it's going to be good. So, you know, you're going to like it. Right. <laughs> like, even if I didn't want to like it, I'm going to like it no matter what. So anyway, The Bad Batch on Disney Plus uh, streaming now. And we'll be right back. Awesome. So that was all we had this week for insights and entertainment. Did you have any parting words or anything to, uh, what are we doing this weekend? Didn't we have an event this weekend that sold out that people can't go to? Or is that next weekend? No, that's in like two weeks, two weeks, the, okay. um, monster mania, monster but mania. there was something that, uh, for the, uh, colonial theater, I think it is in Phoenixville. They usually do like monster movie things or whatever. They were doing, um, the fog and that's a good movie. Something else. They were doing like a double feature. I think there were still tickets available, and it's the weekend of Memorial Day. It's like that Saturday. Oh, okay. Night. Oh, I can't remember what the other movie was. If Urgh. there's tickets available next week, we'll have to well, throw it in. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll mention it uh, next week then. Before we go, though, I would invite folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can get video versions of all of our shows listed under Insights into Things, right? Things? <laughs> yes, Things. things. Uh, Entertainment. Sorry, brain fart. <laughs> It's uh, the end of the day, end of the week. Exactly. You know? uh, then you can get audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights in Entertainment. Into Entertainment. I mumbled there. Um, Mumbles. Yeah. I'm 
getting tired here. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, all of our podcasts are listed on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Amazon, any place you can get a podcast. And we would also invite you to uh, contact us, give us your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can find us at Twitter at insights underscore things. On Facebook, we're at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. On Instagram at instagram.com backslash insights into things. You can get audio versions of this podcast at podcast.insightsinentertainment.com. You can find us on YouTube at youtube.com backslash insights into things. We stream five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things things and then you can also find us <laughs> was, i'm not the only one <laughs> you can find us on the web so if you forget any of those other links go to our main website to find links to everything at insights into things.com go to them there's interwebs <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that's it another one in the books have a good week everyone bye bye, bye.